Be honest. Today we're talking about how book covers play a crucial role in the reception of a book. Are you ready? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> book covers, they're just, they're, they're more than just uh, pretty pictures. It's one of the reasons why. I, I tend to outsource those things for my full-length novels. I did create it my own for my uh, short story, I Love You So Much, and my novella, The Alvarez Girls. Um, just because the budget was not there, but for Mrs. Franchise Evil Ring and for Under the Flamboyant Tree, it, the, the Under the Flamboyant Tree, a book cover, cover artist is doing that right now. Um, and, and I do that just because if I'm going to put in um, all that time into a full-length novel, I'm gonna throw all the resources at it that I can because it's it's very important. It's very important and I hope we know that. So let's start out by saying that book covers are, are more than just pretty pictures. It's, they're more than just graphics um, and they are the first impression that a reader has for a book. So think about it, and I'm guilty of this. I am browsing the shelves of a bookstore, and I literally, I just, I pick it up. I, I pick up a book, right? So let's say, this is, oh my God, it's so messy. I'm like, oh, this is, this is a book. Um, it's actually a notebook, but you know. This is a book, and then, and I look at the cover, I'm like, hmm, and then, I admire the cover and then I go like this to the blurb. So it's literally, for me as a reader, it is a one, two. So, and as a writer, when I put my, my author hat on, and then that's, that's also my priority. I also go one on the cover, two on the blurb. Priority one, priority two. It, because what's inside of it, I'm I'm working on it nonstop. From, is it priority three the inside of a book? No, it is. It goes beyond any priorities because it's something that I just I'm working on continuously. But when it comes to the resources that I throw at a book from my money, because I'm an indie author, it is one is a book cover, um, Two is the blurb and the editing because I also want editors to to go in there and fix the inside. But really, if my book cover is not it's not its best, no one is gonna get to see the inside because they're gonna get turned off by the book cover. <laughs> right, right. I mean, let me know. But it influences a book cover influences your perception and decision making of a book. I I do, if I don't like the book cover, I'm not gonna pick up a book as a reader. Uh, but if it's a well done book cover, it can make you super curious. You're like, oh wow, this is, or it can, it can pique your interest. It can um, make you wonder and ask questions and you're like, oh, let me see. And sometimes for me, like if it makes, if it makes me, ask questions about the book, the plot, the story, the characters. And, and then I go see that the blurb has a hint of what the answer may be or a hint that the answer will be inside. And those two things that are jiving for me, I, I pick it up. I pick it up. Now, on the other hand, a poorly executed cover, book cover, like I said, it can turn people away. I know it has turned me away from books if the book cover was either poorly made or if it didn't represent the book well, I would turn away from it and I would just go grab another book that I thought had a better book cover or was represented better um, by their book cover. Because sometimes you have that. Sometimes you have, um, let's see, this is the best way that I can do it. Sometimes you have, revising. <laughs> Sometimes you have a book, right, that is orange, but the book cover is blue. 
And then you're like, well, that doesn't go together. This book cover is meant to be orange because this is an orange book. It's like, this is a contemporary fiction book. Why does it have a horror book cover? Hmm. Hmm. You see? And then if I'm asking, those are the wrong kind of questions to, to be asking. And if I'm asking those questions and I can't really get to an answer from the blurb or the blurb is also ambiguous and I'm not getting anything, anything from it, then it's just, once again, I'm not going to buy that book. Now, a great example to how book covers play a crucial role in readers and what they buy or don't buy when they see it on the bookshelf, digital or physical bookshelves. It's the girl on the train that became, it became a, not only a bestseller, but it became a movie as well. So that goes to show you how far a well-executed book cover can go. And really the girl on the train I would think, well, I don't know, I may be wrong. Because I was like, that's more of a of a of a font book cover. Because you've seen it. There's some book covers that are mostly graphic heavy that rely on the imagery there, but others rely on the font. You see? So either way, font and imagery, crucial, crucial, so important, so important. Because they got to be able to tell the reader what is the genre of this book. What is this book going to be about? Because once again, if you're asking questions and, and you don't get those from the book cover or the blurb, more often than not, they're going to put that book down. Because it's just it's too ambiguous. Uh, people don't want to play with their money that way. They don't want to be disappointed because reading a book is a time commitment as well. So all these calculations are happening in the reader's head as they compute as to whether they're going to give up this money at the cash register for this book, you see. Uh, But back to The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I'm wrong because there is a, a graphic behind the font here, and it's like blurred. This is where the ingenuity comes in from the book cover designer. This picture is blur. You know how when you go in a in a train, in a, in a fast, I call it the bullet train, like everything just goes shoo, 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 like that, right? That's how the graphic looks. It looks not blur, but it looks like fast paced, like that. And then in front of it, taking up the the entire book is the title and the name of the author. And, and the font convey that this is going to be a thriller, a psychological thriller book, right? So we see that from the fast-paced image and from the font. So now you have those two things congruently making sense to the reader. The blurb is there. The inside of the book is also there. You see what I'm saying? Everything is adding up, but it starts with the book cover. You see, the computation starts with the book cover. I can explain it best by like uh, uh, grading a test. If you don't get the first answer right, then you're not going to get the other answers correctly because the other answers on that test are predicated on the first one. So that's how a book cover is. If you don't have the book cover right, the other things are not going to fall in line. So... I'm telling you, but if you haven't looked at that book cover, go ahead and uh, look it up so that way you can see and tell me, uh, am I really far out on left field? Am I wrong or, or whatnot? Or am I right? Or can you tell me of any other book covers that is kind of like chef's kiss, right? This is perfect. This tells the reader right away what genre it is. Then you flip it to the blurb and it's like everything just adds up and it's like the perfect math equation when it comes to this book. Let me know. Let me know. But don't forget, a great cover not only attracts attention, but it attracts readers. That's what you want. I know that's what we want because we didn't write something to not have anyone read it. We wrote it so that way people can read it. And be on the lookout for the book cover of Under the Flamboyant Tree. 
which the artist told me it will be done next week. And I, of course, I will be sharing it with you all, like, right away. Right away. I'm so excited. Be on the lookout. Don't forget, share, subscribe, like. Talk to you later. Bye.